The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm going to be unboxing my entire Game Gear collection and sharing some collecting tips with you. If you're new to the channel, make sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell so you can be notified when new videos are posted. As many of you know, I'm a huge Sega fan and have been collecting a long time. And I have amassed a U.S. loose cart Game Gear collection. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you what an entire U.S. Game Gear loose cart collection looks like, as well as give some pointers on some of the more rare carts to look out for. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the video. So my entire loose Game Gear set fits in this tiny small box. It's been in my game room a long time, and I look forward to sharing and talking about Game Gear with you. Here we go. So here it is. This is my entire Game Gear collection that I've been collecting nearly for almost 30 years. And so Game Gear came out in the early 90s and I've been collecting it since it came out. Here is my boxed Game Gear that I have in my collection. Uh, they're a little bit beat up, but they work and that's all that matters. One's been recapped, the other one I need to replace. And so a couple accessories here, a Game Genie, a couple ways to play Master System on your Game Gear. And here we go. This is the entire set in alphabetical order. Lots of amazing games. CJ the Elephant is a very rare game. Definitely on the watch. It's, it's peculiar shape too. So you want to keep your eye out for that one. Very difficult to find. Many fantastic releases. Battletoads, Beavis and Butthead, Bonkers. Uh, one of my favorites. Choplifter 3, even the Bubble Bobble is amazing on the Game Gear. You know, it's an early color handheld. It was a big deal, especially competing against Game Boy. You know, it was, uh, you know, it, it didn't do as great as Game Boy, but man, it offered some awesome stuff. And so, so many great memories here. And, you know, the, the loose card set is, much, is a lot easier to attain. Uh, definitely, there's a lot of, you know, adaptations of 16-bit games. Now notice the columns there, there's two versions. I use Sega Retro as a way to identify US releases. It was very, very helpful with this video. Crystal Warriors there. And so, yep, I've been collecting a long time, got many of these games at a Game Crazy uh, near Oregon City. And so uh, many, many favorites growing up, Double Dragon, Dragon Crystal, Earthworm Jim, you know, and the Game Gear offered some fantastic color handheld gaming back in the day, especially when it competed against the black and white Game Boy. You know, the batteries weren't that great, but, uh, you know, it did offer some awesome games and some exclusives. And so Fatal Fury Special there, hard to see in the video, but uh, fantastic port. One of my favorites. Played that quite a bit. So, you know, many different types of labels. You know, you had the purple artwork, you had the original Game Gear logos, and, and even the grid-based artwork, which is confusing because some of the artwork is the same as the, the PAL, and sometimes they change it up. And so definitely using Sega Retro as a reference really helped me determine if I had a US release or not. And so many different releases. Uh, you know, the, the, the Tengen releases, Clax, uncommon to find those. And definitely some of these are, are getting more difficult to find. It wasn't a wide distribution. Now, this is Magical Puzzle Popples, and they use the same label artwork from the Japanese release, but the U.S. packaging, very difficult. Mega Man, another very difficult one to find in the U.S., and it's getting more expensive. Mortal Kombat 1 and 2, many people grew up with those. NBA Jam, played a ton of that. Wasn't that great, but it didn't matter as a kid because I purchased it with my own money and I played it a lot. <laughs> Ninja Gaiden, definitely a, a unique release for the Game Gear. Lots of sports titles. The sports titles should be fairly inexpensive to pick up unless it's Pete Sampras Tennis, which is another very difficult one to find, another odd shaped cart. So many of these are gonna be difficult as there's less game stores that carry these. Often they have the same dozen carts. You're probably gonna have to search on eBay for many of these, but shipping at least should be fairly inexpensive as they're small. So 
lots of sports titles, and there are many 16-bit conversions. So, um, you know, if, if you like the, the Genesis version, you may check out the Game Gear version of the same game. So Samurai Showdown, Shaq Fu, uh, the Shinobi is exclusive, one and two, definitely. And there's a lot of card games, and there's a ton of Sonic releases, many different ones, and some exclusive ones. And so, definitely worth checking out. Three Spider-Man games. Now, upcoming here, sports trivia. There is a championship edition. It's like a kind of an upgrade to it. And so it's kind of like a, uh, like a ROM update. So two Star Trek games, uh, Streets of Rage 1 and 2. I do like the Genesis ones better, but back in the day, it was awesome. Super Space Invaders, another great one and uncommon to find. Even Tails had his own game on the Game Gear. Couple Tasmania games, Tempo Jr. Lots of great memories here. Adventures of Batman and Robin. Played that later. Itchy and Scratchy. Now, Jungle Book. Majesco re-releases are darker in color. And so something to keep an eye out. They, they do look a little bit different than the original releases. Several Simpsons games. Jungle Strike. Desert Strike, Urban Strike, definitely keep an eye out for those. Jungle Strike being, I think, one of the more difficult ones to find. Woody Pop, fantastic breakout style game, one of my favorite. Three X-Men games, all three are great. The second one is considered the, the best of the series, I do believe. I have a couple boxed games, not too many, but I do have a Pete Sampras Tennis, definitely one of the harder ones to get for the set. Keep an eye out for that. Here are my variations, multi-carts, and imports. As you can see, the artwork is different. And so using Sega Retro, you will be able to identify whether or not you have an import or the US version. Very confusing at times. And so, yeah, I even have multi-carts and a couple uh, copy carts, like the, the World Grand Prix there. That's not an official release. So yeah, definitely uh, there's a lot of cool stuff out there to collect. And there you have it. Now I'm gonna be sharing some of my favorite games that I grew up with and playing, and I hope this can help you collect a US Game Gear set. I do these collection videos to share what the physical carts look like to help other collectors out who are going for a complete set. This is definitely doable, but it is gonna be challenging. Game Boy had Tetris and Game Gear had Columns and I was perfectly fine with Columns on the Game Gear. It was the very first game I played on my Game Gear and one of the only titles I had for quite a while and so I got pretty good at it and just played it over and over again. Choplifter 3, definitely another one of my favorites. I was a huge fan of the computer original as well as the Sega Arcade Classic and Choplifter 3 is fantastic. You know, people forget that playing games portable in color was a big deal in the 90s and they had a lot of fun. Woody Pop, terrible name, but a great breakout Arcon Arkanoid clone. Had a lot of fun with this one back in the day. Really fast gameplay and one I probably should revisit because I like these types of games quite a bit. I remember buying this back in high school and was pleasantly surprised with it. Now, Fatal Fury Special is a fantastic 8-bit port of the Neo Geo game. I can't believe they fit all the action and the experience into a Game Gear game. It is really well done. Control is the plus here. Really easy to pull off special moves. I found myself playing this quite a bit. And even though it's scaled back, I think it's a lot better than the Samurai Showdown conversion. And so this is definitely one of the better fighting games on this portable. Bubble Bobble, another great port of the arcade classic. I love the Nintendo release and I found this one to be fantastic. Great music and gameplay. It also had the Link capabilities where you could play two player. I played the arcade game back in the day quite a bit. So being able to play a color handheld version that was close to the arcade was fantastic. 
So there you have it. What are your memories of the Game Gear? Did you have any of these in your collection or are you currently collecting for the Game Gear? I'd love to hear about your stories and your comments are important. Please comment below and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it helps me out so much. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the Immortal John Hancock and you take care.